Hi, and welcome to this little video about micro tapes. Um, I wanted to share with you my experiences and what I've learned from developing the new U Tape Scrubber module. Uh, it's like a bi directional um, micro tape looper that's um, CV controllable and you can like scrub and scratch the tape. But uh, the way it works is like a sound on sound you know, um, recorder, so you can keep layering stuff up on top of each other and with a momentary erase, erase bits. It's a lot of fun, um, but of course, you know, to send these out, uh, I had to start making and sourcing these micro tapes. And it was a bit of an afterthought, and I um, thank you everyone for your patience who's been waiting for one. Um, this was what was holding me up. You wouldn't think something so small could cause so many problems. But um, sourcing them, I just could not find, and I have tried, I bought all of these different types and there's a few more stray around the workshop, but yeah, they're really inconsistent when it comes to buying them with these um, screws. But the good news is um, I've been able to source a hundred of these AT&T ones, which do have the screws. And um, I'm going to be making these loops available through my website. Um, I think it's going to be like one of these and a pack of five um, ready to go in with some spare tape, a blade and a little bit of splicing tape, that blue stuff on there, uh, which is like a special formulation. I've tried to match this and even, you know, got in touch with 3M about it. And I cannot, I think it's been specifically made for uh, tape. It costs about 12 50 on eBay and oh, it's really I really begrudgingly buy it, but it is worth it. Um, so yeah, I want to make these available really. Uh, it's not just for, you know, anyone who's going to be experimenting with these or uh, maybe some other tape um, based, you know, micro tape based stuff in the future, just to give a hint. But uh, you might not even be into your rack. You might just be um, more interested in playing around with stuff on desktops. And I've been loving it. I mean, I'm treating these they've got their own tone and character and I feel in a way they end up being their own an instrument of sorts so like what I've got here I mean you will have heard people doing ambient stuff um, and I kind of like just getting these together listen well that was apt and that's kind of what I was going to get onto next what I love about these is um, it's not just the tone it's actually it's the actual approach to experiencing sound they force me to listen more than to make noise um, there's a saying isn't there he who always talks um, can only uh, say words you know he who thinks all the time can only think of thoughts so it encourages you just to, just to listen. And I've been taking this out and about with me and making um, sound collage, collages um, of atmospheres and um, environments. And I even made a little piece where I was dragging the microphone through the strap, you know, it's called the, the, sound, the sound of Bristol. Uh, I haven't released that yet, but it's just uh, a noise piece. Uh, I, like I say, it's really taking me away from maybe sitting in my room and playing with um, a, mo a modular or a on a computer and getting me out and about and, and listening rather than making. So um, I hope this will be useful for other people, you know, being able to buy the loops and get out there and start exploring and experimenting. Um, but if you're lucky enough to have been able to find some with these screws. Uh, you might have a bit of luck like I did on eBay. Although I'm moaning about it, you know, I was able to make some before I hit the jackpot with these. Um, some of the brands that you might have some luck with, uh, Maxell UR60s. I think one of these I had screws with. There was a BT tape that did. Some Olympus do, but not all. Um, see this one's peeled back and doesn't. But this Olympus, which is quite special, I think it's a chrome tape because I was looking at it earlier and I think there are some dictaphones out there. You know, although the dictaphones meant for kind of like the business market, it was never meant for audiophiles. Um, 
these ones look to be chrome, but I've got to do some more investigation. Uh, once I found these, uh, you know, as everybody knows, I'm well behind with the U tape scrubber and had to get that out. Um, but anyway, if you were lucky enough, um, making a loop is super simple. Um, and also, if you buy the pack, dropping them in is way easier than making a, you know, a standard size loop. Um, it's just a case of pulling the wheels out the side and then popping the loop over the top and you can slip the cover over and you'll see why it's different because it, essentially the guides are all on one side, um, all of them on the inside and then there's a row on the outside which are with the top piece. So you're able to slide them together really easily. Um, so that's one that I made earlier. That's You'll want to re rewind your tape um, back to the beginning. Uh, you might notice, you might have seen there, um, it go from left to right. So micro cassettes actually play the opposite direction um, rather than a standard tape which goes left to right. These go right to left. But they are similar in that the actual tape is very, very similar. You know, it's normally ferric oxide type one and it will be one eighth inch. So uh, just worth noting that. Um, yeah, so we've rewinded it now and we can start to take apart the tape. Uh, I think this is a very fine style posi head, but it's like a, I think PH treble zero that I'm using at the moment. Uh, and if you're a bit more thorough than I am, because um, these are so easily lost and uh, you know, they do come back. I said the, the saying in the workshop is the floor taketh and the floor giveth. And uh, I, with these, I think the floor taketh more than giveth. So they, <laughs> uh, sometimes you, I'll just end up putting two back in. Um, but if you're a bit more thorough than me, put them to one side, keep an eye on them. And we're gonna take this apart now. You can get rid of these uh, slip kind of covers. And what we wanna do is grab our spools. I find these blades way easier to work with. Um, you know, you do have those kind of st uh, stencil style ones where it's maybe on a handle, but having a large flat edge like that, it works well for me. Um, you want to cut this off. Don't um, pull it out because then the metal piece in the middle of here won't stay. Uh, it's only the thickness of that tape wedged underneath it that holds the whole thing together. So just leave that as it is. Then you can drop that back into the base. And we'll just pop it near the front edge there. And then with the other one, uh, if you have more time than I do, I'd probably wind this back up. Although tapes, you know, it's, we're not going to run out anytime soon, let's put it like that. Especially if you're like me. I mean, God, the amount of tape, um, I'm, I'm ready to go off to a bunker somewhere and uh, I could live out the rest of my life um, making strange collages and ambient pieces and uh, noisy stuff with all the stuff I've kept to one side. So yeah, we're not going to use any of that. Can you see it's all been ruffled and crinkled? We might as well just go to the point where we've got some nice clean tape and we're just going to cut off a section. And we'll keep that for making our loop with a little bit later. Okay, and we need this um, inner spool. So uh, if you'd been more careful, that would then hold itself together with a bit of tape, but we're gonna remove this. Oop. Could have done that a little bit neater, but it doesn't matter. Just keep coming, there we go. And, uh, recommend getting yourself if you're going to be making loops a lot a little tray like this is really nice um, you do end up making a lot of mess uh, and a lot of tape goes everywhere but it's all part of the fun and uh, be careful cutting like that you really should like cut away from you making sure your fingers are nowhere near kind of the direction you're cutting um, but I'm just a bit more that's a fair about it. And what we want in the end is this basically two our wheels still in place, our felt pads, and then the two inner spools. 
and we're going to pop that to one side and then cut out our tape. Um, I found that the length of tape is like super critical with this, um, whereas with you know your standard big tape loops, which are 22 if you just use one spool, um, you've got a couple of mil either side you could go to really and it would still work. With these we cut it to 20 for these AT&T tapes, it might vary. I found some tapes prefer 12.5 um, and some are better. I'm just going to see if I can show why. So some of them, let's see if I can get this on the camera properly. Okay, so you see above this wheel, we've got a guide post. If you're able to put the tape be between these two, then you can go to 12.5. But if you're going to go around them, then 12.6, uh, maybe even a little longer on the 12.6 side, somewhere in between 12.6 and 12.7. But try um, it out, you know, And but I found 12.6 is quite taut, and that's what I want for the U tape scrubber, because we're making the tape go back and forth. Any slack will mean a kind of, a little bit of a lag in it moving, because of course it's got to take up that slack first before the tape will actually start to rotate. So uh, if you find that yours looks a little bit different to that and that there's a gap to go between more towards that way than round it all, try a slightly shorter one. You might find that 12.6 is too long. So we'll get our tape, chuck it down here and I'll, you'll see I've marked on this bit of masking tape uh, 12.6 and at this point the video is going to be a little bit similar to the other video that I've made in the past in that ultimately all we're now doing is cutting up a bit of tape and we're going to stick the two ends together making sure to keep the magnetic ferret coated side on the side that's going to be exposed to the actual tape head and with some formulations this can be difficult, but where we are at the moment, you might see that it's curling up. So it's got a bit of memory from when it was on the spool, and that's going to give us a good indication of which side the um, ferric oxide is on. The fer it'll be on the outer side. If you imagine that was all spooled up, and then it's going to go right to left, excuse me, down like that, um, off the spool, and then across the head. So the tape will be facing this way, and then the head is facing up that way like so. So we're going to put the adhesive tape on the inside. So we'll cut a small section, maybe um, just under a centimetre, and uh, I'll have to hope and pray with this bit because it's it looks like quite old and it's been on this tray for a while, but we should get away with it. It's only for bit of a demo. Um, this tape, like I say, is pretty special, quite expensive, but you see how thin it is, it's almost transparent, but it's more about the tack, unlike sellotape, which you have one kind of hit at, one go, and it will stick. This is a lot more forgiving. So um, I'm going to take the tape and have it, see the contour, it almost wraps around my finger, then pull it between forefinger and thumb there, and then we'll get our bit of tape here. Yeah. Sorry if I'm going off camera a little bit and it's quite difficult to, to do both. There we go, move that up. And we're gonna, and I've got a, a big camera stand between me and, and it at the moment, which uh, isn't the way I'd normally do it. Uh, I think we should, ah, my fault, it's on the other side. There we go. You see, the way I've positioned myself there, I don't have to move, I can just then squeeze it together and that'll stay. And then using the tweezers, you can make sure it doesn't um, twist. Now that's quite easy with these small loops. When you get to some really big ones, um, the more you handle them, they'll just really play you up. And uh, before you know it, you've put a big twist in the whole loop. See there, just because I've been playing with it a little bit more, it's like it wants to show you. Anyway, we'll go back to here and I'm going to position this and then when I'm happy just 
squeeze them together and there we go there's a new little loop um, if you're lucky enough to have um, bought one of these kits that I'm doing um, you'll have that loop already so all you'll have to do is pick up you know the inside making sure all your bits are in place there and we're going to pull the wheels here to this inside edge and uh, you'll see it's a lot simpler than doing it if you've watched that other video ah, I think I've got some glue on there but we'll try our best Ooh, okay and then push these back grand very happy with that and so you'll see all the guides that are on the base sit on the inside making this really quite simple nothing in the way and then the final stage uh, that wheel's just come a little bit misplaced we want it taut so it's when this top cover goes back together we can you and you'll see the guides that go on the outside are all on this top piece so when we start off kind of in this kind of position and then slide that way um, we'll have the tape between those two sets of guides and all that remains to be done is to find where did I put those screws here and we're going to pop just two back in there so we can crack on with the video as I'm sure I bored you all to death by now but um, I do hope you get into it I mean making loops what I love about it is it just gives me a moment to um, stop what I'm doing and it's it's almost like a mindfulness practice you know very therapeutic and relaxing and at the end of it you've got a loop so now we've got our tape loop uh, installed in this dictaphone uh, what we're going to do is sample some of that ambient uh, from really? they got rid of the just mash some things together and see what happens. You would always know.
So uh, what's all this about eliminating insecurity? Incidentally, if you've got any old records that have scratches on them and make it, they make funny noises. When you just put them on and imagine that you're sitting in front of a fireplace. And they, the sound comes through quite clearly. No problem. The show then, uh, there was an extraordinary eccentric called John Cage. He was a good friend of mine. And, uh, the show then, uh, there was an extraordinary eccentric called John Cage. He was a good friend of mine. And, uh, so then, uh, there was an extraordinary eccentric called John Cage. He was a good friend of mine. And uh, he used to, he was a very competent musician. Oh, I mean, Juilliard and all that. He knew it all. And uh, so he first of all experimented with uh, opening up the piano and attaching paper clips, nails, and washers to the strings so that they made very unusual noises. by the audience in reaction to all the noise he had prepared originally. Then he played that back to them and re-recorded their reaction to it and then played that back. Then he gave a, he gave a real one. He gave a formal concert in New York. I was one of the important all concerts. And he appeared beautifully dressed in white tie and tails. And uh, with an assistant uh, to turn the pages of the score, <laughs> grand piano, everything formally set up. But the score consisted entirely of rests. 